Hello, and welcome to SoberCast, where we provide AA speaker meetings and workshops in podcast format. We're an ad-free podcast, and if you enjoy listening, please help us be self-supporting by visiting SoberCast.com, look for the donate link, and drop a dollar or two into our virtual basket. We hope you enjoy the podcast. Have a great day. God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things I can, and the wisdom to know the difference. You know, this is our regular Friday night open meeting of alcoholics in, uh, in Beverly Hills on Wilshire, and today is what, November 15th, right? 1996. Gotta get it, gotta get it on a tape so it changes later on. We play it. I know which tape is which. Uh, well, you know, uh, this meeting here is, uh, was in the prime time we talk about alcoholism. But you know, when there's cakes too, uh, you know, like I, I have to say anyway myself about birthday cakes, uh, how important they are. And it's not the cake, it's the candles, what they represent, you know, because the, the uh, candles, you know, the, uh, the first one, uh, my, my first birthday, uh, I didn't want it, you know, and I didn't take it till three months later. And, uh, but uh, through the years, I've realized uh, a great deal about them candles, what they do represent, you know, what they do show. Just like tonight, whether it's yours or mine, doesn't make any difference. Because at first it was a, it was like a hardship, and it, it was like coming from from hell, you know, really, and then coming into a world that uh, turned into a beautiful world, turned into. Uh, a world like uh, like Ted was mentioning there, where where else could I have gone, or what could have happened to be any different, you know, than than uh, than it is? There's certainly no buildings. There was no uh, there was nothing for me other than what I found here in Alcoholics Anonymous, and uh, that's the reason why I talk today. I talk uh, I talk about the I talk about today now the now I talk about. Uh, 12 steps in, uh, in application and recovery, you know, not working them or reading them or talking about them, but, but, uh, the real reason to be here in this room tonight, you know. Uh, I don't know if, uh, you know why you're here, I don't know, but I didn't know why I was here for a long time because I didn't know what was the matter with me. I had something wrong with me and, uh, and I certainly wasn't liquid. It wasn't. It didn't come out of the bottle. You know, it came out of my life as I lived it, and I didn't know why, and I, and I couldn't see anything here to connect up to the reason to come to these meetings and keep coming and keep coming. You know, uh, things that I heard then, you probably heard yourself, even right, maybe recently. Uh, words like keep coming back, you know, and uh, don't take the first drink and uh, turn it over and. Uh, Often to go to more meetings, you know, things like that, you know. That's good advice, you know, but not for someone like me. Now, if you're an alky like me, uh, you can't tell me to do anything anyway. You know, I don't care who you are, you know. Uh, the idea behind uh, everything for me was the same thing, that uh, it's my stomach, you know. I'll do all of the thinking. I'll do all of the whatever it is, you know. I don't need your help, you know, and so on. There was an ice man that delivered ice and an ice in all the joints that I went to, especially this one joint where I live. And uh, this this ice man, you know, I uh, never once ever said a word to me about the condition I was in when I was at really really down. I was down deep in the alcoholism, and uh, but I heard from the bartender and the owner of the joint, you know, about why not talk. His name is Ed Stevens. He's dead now. He died after 30 years in the AA of a heart attack, and. Uh, uh, so I yelled for help, and when I yelled for help, he put me in a hospital and he paid my bills and he took care of me, you know, in this way and that way. And uh, but still, I I went to meetings for the next two and a half years, same man sober as I was drunk. Uh, I moved, I went in Cleveland, Ohio, and I moved out here to California, and uh, you know, I started going to meetings and lived at meetings and first the first two and a half years, I was exactly the same man sober as I was drunk. I thought the same, acted the same, and I didn't know what was wrong with me, though. Now, that seems like to you, like a lot of you, you've heard me say that. It's, you know, it's the story of my life, you know, it's real, it happened. But you got to realize something there, that 
that what happened back then, and that was this December 13th, you know, uh, it will be 44 years. Now you can imagine 44 years, and then you've seen two cakes now with 13 years, and yet the same thing happened in them 13 years that happened to me in 44 years, and anybody that likes today, now I don't want to tell you newcomers that are brand new, but the disease of alcoholism is a way of life. It's a method of living. But I never knew what it was. I never knew. And to say that you're an alcoholic with alcoholism and not know exactly what the word alcoholism means, you know, I think I think it should be exposed or talked about or brought out or or uh, looked at or considered or whatever because of the fact that why keep coming to these meetings and uh, or even why read the book this uh, 12 by 12 here you know or the big book either one and uh, and then still still think with the same mind that brought you here and uh, still do your very best which i did my very best to stay away from here and i got here and then when i got here i kept my very best going and it got me in more trouble you know so there is something here. There is something here. But you know I, what I believe has to be talked about and uh, is about a little bit more than just being drunk. A little bit more or just about sobering up or coming to AA and start uh, meeting dependable at work and wearing clean clothes and buying new cars and, and all that. I think a lot more has to be talked about than that. I think because of the relationship that my mind produces with 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 me at that time was a was a wife I took through the drinking days and then she stayed with me and I got sober and she stayed with me and uh, for uh, three and a half years and then she died uh, she died of pneumonia so so I think that what should be what should be looked at or considered even is that the reason to come to Alcoholics Anonymous more than just to stay out of the bottle or or drugs or whatever else substance you can think of and uh, because of the day that I live in and uh, meaning this day today and right now is not that I'm uh, the, this 44 years that I was I was getting prepared for for the time of 44 just like Rick there I know I don't know if you know but I know that you know the candles are beautiful and the number of candles on there 13 they mean a great deal but how about now, tomorrow, when you wake up, see, you know, that's what counts, see. Because I was taught by my sponsor that this time factor to treat alcoholism, it never is alcoholism. You can't take 13 years now and say, man, I'm way past all of this mind and all of these troubles and all of this here, this life that alcoholism produces, you know, and... You know, and even in the book when it starts out, you know, about uh, about people that aren't alcoholics, that they find that uh, this year is a good application, you know, for their life too, for problems other than alcohol. And so the disease of alcoholism, I know for sure that I never knew what that was, and I had to learn what it was. And then I had to learn that there had to be something different in my life daily, and that was a character-building thing. And it came from an application of 12 steps. And these 12 steps are in an order form. Now, this is maybe old hat to you in what I'm saying. Maybe so, maybe not. But I'll tell you what. Right today, this day today, I'm still the same place where I was back when I started. I needed to have what Vic talked about there, about a power greater than self, which I call God, Lord. And I had to have a method of living in the day I was in, meaning character change, character change. And you know, on page uh, page 63 in your in your big book here, when it says I was reborn, reborn spiritually, that means a great deal to me. That's them. Them are not just words. That isn't words at all. That means that there's something happened to me. And when I when I ask God to be relieved of the bondage of self in prayer. And the way it's said it in here, it's got to be voiced. It's got to be spoken, you know. And I did that. And then all of a sudden, I had something inside of me that was there and stayed there. And it was about a power greater than me. So there was, I didn't know at the time, there was a character being built. A character. 
And I couldn't, I, in the word character, I didn't like. I didn't like the word character because I used to be described as a bad character. Don't touch that character. Don't go out with that character. You know, you, you know, different things like that, you know. And so this word character, and it's all through the big book of the 12 by 12. I didn't like the word character, you know, but today it's a different story. I do like this character, you know. And this character lives right here, see, and right here is my heart and soul. And that's where I build a character with God and the 12 steps. And this is what I didn't know, that I could find a way of life and live in a world that I want to live in. It's a beautiful world. And not only is it a beautiful world, it doesn't have alcoholism in it as a way of life that, that I, what, as I drive my car or as I uh, think with my mind, you know, that right here, not the brain up here, but the mind, you know, that, I'm, you know, I'm actually proud of my mind, the way, the way it thinks, the way it acts, what it tells me, the way it looks at people. Uh, it used to be at one time everything was a rat race. I used to think the rat race was out there somewhere. And I didn't know the rat race was here in me. And so I learned, uh, I learned a great deal about alcoholism so that this year, like myself, what I call the ABCs, if, if I didn't know, if I didn't know the ABCs, what good would the steps be? Because I can read, you know, and read as well as anybody. And I read everything about step one. There's only two pages here, you know, and I read it and read it and read it and read it. And then I go to step two and read it and we read it and go to step three. And while I'm doing all this, I remained the same man on two and a half years of that. I had a sponsor, I went to meetings, I did not drink, and I'm stay the same man sober as I was drunk. So as I sat there at meetings like this here, there'd be somebody up here talking, man or woman talking up here. Maybe sometimes a speaker, maybe it was a book study, or maybe it was just sharing, maybe whatever. And I sat there, and as I sat there, I, would, I went out the door after the meeting, and I was the same man now out there as I was before I walked in this building, in this door, in this meeting, and everything else like that. There's so much to talk about, about the description of alcoholism, and the purpose of coming to meetings, and the purpose of having 12 steps as an application in my life as the day I live in, which is now, for the day that I live in now. I'm not building a character for the future. I can't, I can't store this stuff up. And, uh, and rely upon maybe so many candles, you know, now I got that many candles, I, uh, man, I'm all right, you know, this is all, this is gravy, now this is easy, slide, you know, that I, I can, I can have anything I want now, see, you know, today, this day. I didn't know about alcoholism being a disease of the mind, but a power of the mind. It controls me, it's the authority, it's the, it's the main man. And it's in me because I built me a long time ago, and that's all I've got, is me. Even though I learned to call a, a God, a God, another man, another alcoholic, he told me, why don't you, he said, why don't you try my God? He said, what you got doesn't seem to be working now. This was up in San Fernando, see. And I had been sober now for some time, now two and a half years, you know, before I even made an attempt. I wouldn't even say the Lord's Prayer. And uh, the reason I'm putting it all together like this is because of the two cakes and because of the message of alcoholism and the purpose of a meeting like this here so that you could benefit maybe from something and hear something now. Because you know every one of us know how to hurt people. Every one of us know how to do that. We know how to hurt our wives or girlfriends. That's very easy. Man, I'm an expert at that, you know. And But I don't know how to live in a world of good people and then be a part of that world and start to contribute to that world. I don't know how to do that. But I know how to take care of me, though. And I know how to do things so that I get what I want. But I don't care about you. But I might have to help you sometime, but helping you is making me better. Getting, giving me things. Now, this kind of talk sounds silly, maybe, but it's not silly. It's the way I live. It's the way I function. I went through the day I was in all the time. And I went through that day according to what I believed I should do. That means me telling me, here's the way you do it, here's the way you think it, here's the way you act it, here's the way you treat people, here's the way you look at people. And you know, I can, you know, talking about birthdays, I can remember a, a, talking to Vic over there about a situation that he was in about work. And 
and uh, I don't know if he remembers it or not, but I sure remember it real well. And it's a good lesson to learn, you know, because of the fact that what he did, he applied the steps and he got beautiful results. He, he really got results that he needed very badly, and he got them. And this here is something to know about because of the fact that all of us, every one of us, when you're sober, dead, dead sober, man, there's no whiskey in you for years, you know. Why well, keep coming to meetings? When does alcoholism need treating? When does it need treating? Does it need treating after you have 13 candles? And then it's gone as it wasn't? You know, I'll tell you this. These are important things to look at and they're important to consider. Because how many of you today, this day today, has somebody come into your life today or have you looked at somebody with real, real anger or real uh, critical? Whether it was on the freeway, maybe in your own home, maybe your own kids, maybe your own wife, maybe your neighbor next door. How many, how much of today was spent where you, you had, you had inside, you had something stewing? I used to stew inside, you know. I come in here and I was mad on the outside, I was mad on the inside, you know. Then all of a sudden I was only mad on the inside, I wasn't mad on the outside, see. And I didn't know what that was. That's the disease of alcoholism. And it was in me growing when I was sober and I didn't know the difference. I didn't know why I come to meetings like this. I didn't know that there's 12 steps in an order form to build a new character in the day I'm in as I live this day. Now that's easy for my mind up here to accept it. That's easy to accept. But to live it, that's a different story. That's entirely different. That means that I have to walk and talk today with a power greater than me. Step two is where it says, I came to believe in a power greater than me will restore me to sanity. What's sanity? Sanity says in the book, soundness of mind. Soundness of mind is wholeness and wellness of my mind. A mind that doesn't need to have to go into that rat race, into that world that's upside down, only because I make it upside down. The character building, I think, should be talked about a great deal. Character building. Because I've got to be the character God says I'll be through the program of recovery, meaning the application, meaning that I can be different today than I ever have before. I am different. I know I'm different. I know that the disease of alcoholism is a thought process. I know that this thought process is coming from me that I can't afford to have one thought, not one thought against you, whoever you are. Whether you're alcoholic or not, doesn't make no difference. I can't afford to think rotten inside. It hurts me. It breaks the relationship with a power greater than me. God doesn't want me to think like that or act like that. And the reason I know that is because I feel it. I feel inside. I feel guilty. I feel as if I'm not adequate enough or I didn't do the job well enough. I have something wrong with me. It's my mind. When it gets to be a power, it starts talking to me. Instead of having a power greater than me talk to me, I talk to me. I'm back to the disease. I'm back to my old way of thinking and living. And here it is now, I'm years later in Alcoholics Anonymous. Two and a half years before I made a beginning or a start. The start of a, a relationship with a power greater than me, another man's God. And the moment I made that beginning, something started to become self-evident to me. And what it was is the fact that the world started to change. The chip of my shoulder came off right away. I wasn't looking to find fault with you. I wasn't looking for a fight or an argument with anybody. I just walked and talked in the day I was in at work, and I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed working. I enjoyed being there. I had a good time. There was times came that maybe maybe I did, didn't feel too good that day. Maybe something went wrong and it got a hold of me. But it was getting less and less. But the thing that I recognized all the time, that the disease of alcoholism when God isn't there, I'm there. And when I'm there, the disease is there. And that's today's life, too. Now, these are principles. All through here, they're talking now in the steps about principles, truths, that I can live in the day I'm in according to the will of God. In step three, when it said in there that I made a decision to turn my will and my life over to care of God as I understood him, understood him, Understood that it's he is the power. 
greater than me from step two. That he can do what I can't do. I didn't know that there is a way to live. Can you imagine now? Here I come in step one, thinking that it says in here, I admit it, I'm powerless over how it's all dash. My life's unmanageable. And I thought that meant now. All I have to know is the booze was killing me, and I quit the booze because they 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 brought they took me out of a hospital. And then I thought that's all there is to it now. Now I'll go to step two. You know, you know step one? I found out in step one that if you're if you this is my this is this is what I experienced myself now. That if if you got a baby or any you work with anybody at all, if you can do step one with them and show them what step one really means, you know what? It isn't necessary for them to go out and get drunk again. It isn't necessary for them to call it a so-called slip. It isn't. If you do step one, the way step one should be done, I believe, in character application, because of what it says. First, I had to recognize that when they start out in step one, in the 12 by 12 here, and it starts out there about glass in hand, I warp my mind. Well, you know, to, uh, to, to accept the fact, or at least consider a fact, that I've got a warped mind. I believe that's quite, a, that's quite an accomplishment. But who talks about that? Or who says that? Who wants to even consider themselves that their mind is a little bit screwy? I didn't want to say it. I didn't want to let nobody know that I don't know that, and I don't accept that either. And then, you know, the better part about that is in step one is on the bottom of, of step one. And this year, I think, should be said and talked about because of the fact that I come out of a bar and I come out of a hospital because I was I was drunk all the time, drank. And I thought that that's what they're talking about. And it says, we know that little good can come to any alcoholic who joins AA unless he first accepted his devastating weakness and all of its consequences. Until he so humbles himself, his sobriety of any will be precarious. Of real happiness, he'll find none at all. Proved beyond doubt by an in the immense experience, this is one of the facts of the AA life. Now, you know, that might not sound important to you, but here's what I found out. My devastating weakness is not falling down drunk, going in bars and drinking and, and uh, living and giving them my money and everything else like that. That's not my devastating weakness and all of its consequences. That isn't. You know what it is? My devastating weakness is that I have a mind. And this mind I have tells me to do things, and I do them. The consequences that I have is what falling down drunk does, losing your job, losing your paycheck, losing your wife, losing your home, losing your car, everything. See, that's the consequences. The devastating weakness is my mind. I've got a warped mind. I don't know it. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. And even at the end, of, you know, in the step two, at the end of step two, when, it, when two says, I came to believe in a power greater than me will restore me to sanity. And it, then it goes on and talks in there about how I have to have an open mind and about I have to quit the debating society, you know, that means the argumentative mind or the mind that wants to quarrel either way. It doesn't make no difference either way. But it ends in, in, in step two. It says in there that I'll admit that I'm a problem drinker, but in fact I won't admit I'm mentally ill. Now, mentally ill, I thought that means you're crazy, you're insane. Man, I was a service manager at Lincoln Mercury dealership, and I worked hard, two years, really hard, hard work, just to get the job. You think I'm insane? You think I'm crazy? No way, man. I said, that don't fit me at all. You know, this here, this business now, that's not me. And step three came into my life. And when it came into my life, I thought it was no more than this man's God. That's, that's, what, that's what I did. I got on my knees and I prayed to this man's God because he told me that's what he did. And so I did the same thing and I expected the same results. Didn't happen at all. I would pray to this God, get up from my knees, go out in the world I'm in, and there I'm out there with me again. I got the same man with me as I always had, me. I got the same kind of thinking, always. Disease of alcoholism. Is a way of life, and I'm using it again. But the worst part about all of this is what happens in between each minute of each day. I live in a world that I tear apart. I live in a world that I hurt people. 
And I really, really hurt people. I hurt people that really love me. I, have, I, hurt, I hurt people at work, even. Even the boss. The guy that owned the joint, you know, would try to help me. He gave me the big book one day. And he said his partner, who was a banker down there, this is in Cleveland Ohio, he said he borrowed it from him to give it to me because this, this banker was like me at one time. So he gave me this. You know what I did with it? I threw it in the back seat. <laughs> About two or three weeks later, you know, I gave it back to him. He said, you read it? I said, yeah. He said, what do you think of it? It's a good book. You know. <laughs> he actually believed me. He really believed me. He thought I read that. He looked at it, you know. I would even park my car way down the street from the beer joint I'm talking about, which is I, I gave him every paycheck I did, thinking I could hide the car and they wouldn't know that I drink. But I couldn't hide in the morning, you know, I, I'm, I'm, everybody like, like customers, you know. They'd say, man, you drink this early in the morning, you know? He didn't know it. I'm still drinking from last night. I didn't stop drinking, so, you know. But to know all of this stuff, and then go ahead and get stay sober, just like I'm sober here tonight, maybe, you know, all of you are sober too, and not benefit or not, not know just exactly why you're sitting here, just exactly what is, what is this disease of alcoholism? Why can't it go away? Why is it called alcoholism if you're not drinking? I had to find out. I had to find out all these things. I had to find out that why I would treat my wife the way, she, the way I treat her when I was sober. I couldn't figure it out because I was cussing and swearing. I was slamming doors. I was, I was giving her a dirty look or, you know, this island treatment anyway, you know, for maybe a day or two. Why would, why would I do any of these things? I never once ever questioned it, you know, never once. I, knew, I felt, but inside I was, I was, I was feeling bad inside because of my behavior. I couldn't explain away my behavior, no way at all. This might not sound much like much to you, I don't know. But you see, I never looked inside here. I looked inside of you. And I didn't know how to look inside here. I didn't know how to look at me and see me for who I really am. That's what this meeting's about, if you don't know it. That's what all meetings are about, is to be, see and to be somebody in the day you're in, different than you are. That I can, that you can talk up here and I can see me through you. This is something to know. Because we come from all walks of life, yet we are all, every one of us has the same problem. No matter whether you got 13 years, one year, candy hug, you got only a few, few days, or how many you got now? Huh? 40 days now. Four. She, that's my daughter. She went out. She got, she had what to have? Eight months. That's why I'm picking on her. She's my daughter. <laughs> she had eight months because I gave her a chip even, you know, six months chip. But all of a sudden she decided there was something out there that she could do and get away with it. And she found out different. Now she's back. But you know, in my book, I don't care about yesterday. I really don't. I don't care a bit about yesterday's. But I do care about today's. And I can help her today, I'll help her. These yesterdays, my, mine or yours, I know, I know you can't store it up. I know you can't put it away like and then draw interest from it. I know you can't do that. I tried that, you know. I know that your years, whatever they are, I know that it was only for the day you lived in, whether you know it or not, I know it. That this day today, if I don't have the power with me of God, who have I got? Nobody but me. That's all. And when, you, when, I go, when I go into this power, I go into the disease of alcoholism because it's my mind. I didn't know the step applications and the importance of step one, step two, step three, because of what they say and what they do in principle. And here, when they're talking in here, that my life's unmanageable. And step one, where when it ends, it says, I admit that I'm powerless over alcohol, and it's got a dash, and it says that my life's unmanageable. 
unmanageable life. I didn't know what an unmanageable life is. My life's unmanageable drunk. My life's unmanageable sober. My life's unmanageable forever by me. These are principles I had to look at and learn. That that's the reason why they have an application of steps here. That I can have something now. I can have a power greater than me that will restore me to sanity, meaning of God. I learned to call him God. You know what page 109 says in here? It says, I'm going to learn to love God and call him by name. Page, one, page 109. You want to look it up? It's in there in print. And I do. I have tonight before this meeting started. I talked to this God. But I talked to him about my life, me. About helping me, guiding me, strengthening me. So that I can carry his message and do his will. But you see what that is? That's the application now going on that I had to learn to do here in Alcoholics Anonymous for my life, not for yours. I'm not here for you. And you've got to realize this because if you don't, it's the same thing as trying to stay sober and then have, have a world out there that turns ratty all the time or have a job or have something go wrong and blame that on something other than what it should be blamed on. Uh, the relationship I have in the day I'm in, it better be with a power greater than me, which is God. I also better have the principles of the truth that I can use so that I could be the, the person I should be, the character I should be with God. And this is what this meeting here is all about because of the fact of what it is. Twelve steps in program recovery. That's what it's called. Because after I went to meetings, and I went to hundreds of meetings, and I was the same man after the meetings as I was before. How come? Have you ever checked in yourself? Have you ever asked yourself these questions now like this? Because this is something important. I came here for me and didn't know. I came here out of an alky hospital and thought that by coming to AA because my sponsor told me to, that I'm gonna stay I'm gonna sit like you're sitting right now. And my sponsor had nine years in AA when I yelled for help and I thought that nine years I'll be like him, sitting in meetings like this. All I have to do is come to meetings, and that's all there is to it. That's all. Nothing else. I never once realized, I never once knew, there's a disease called alcoholism, and it's in my mind. And it's a power. And it tells me how to act and how to think. I've already built me. Nobody built me but me. No father, no mother, no bartenders, nobody else out in that world built me. I built me. I was the one that said it should be this way. I'm the one that said, give me this shot. Give me a shot and a beer. I was the one that went in there and did that. I was the one that got into fights and arguments and said, man, you're so wrong, I'm going to have to show you how wrong you are. I was the one, see, I was the one that did that. I built me. Man, I did. Check your own track record out. Check it out and see. Who tells you how to act? Who told you to get mad? Who told you how to drive your car? Out in that freeway, it gets too crowded, like we like we found today. You know, the bumper all over the room. Here, this guy is trying. He, he can't even get. How can he get in there? Ain't nobody here in the room. But he gets. He wants in there anyway. Uh, who told him to get in there? You know. <laughs> <Where's John? laughs> you know. This might sound funny here. You know, it's not funny. Ha! It's funny peculiar because. Because of what follows that, see, you know, what follows that, see, is that I get meaner inside, I get more for the next driver or the next event that happens, I get more powerful, I want to, I actually want to see more, you know, the first thing you know, I'm mad, I'm mad, I'm really mad, and I can't afford to, I can't afford to be mad, because right away the disease of alcoholism, meaning me, becomes the power, now I'm mad at the world. I'm not mad at one person. I'm mad at the world. Because I cannot, you know, like page 53 is talking about here. And it talks in here about, I, I can't, I have the total inability to form a true partnership with another human being. You know what I used to think that meant? I thought that meant somebody that I'm in contact with. You know, like my wife or a guy I'm working with next to or something like that. I didn't know the meaning behind that. That I've got the total inability to form a true partnership with another human being means my neighbor. My neighbor could be you. It could be somebody down the street that I'm going to meet at the market. It could be anywhere. Here I thought they were talking here to me directly about some friend. 
that I'm with all the time. Somebody, maybe, maybe at home, you know. They're not talking about that. They're talking about the character I am. I've got the total inability to form a two partnership with anybody. Doesn't mean they never who they are. Because all of a sudden I look at them suspiciously, or I envious, or jealous, or whatever. And the next thing you know, I'm talking about the, my head. I'm talking to me about it. And there I am again. I'm up my old tricks, you know. I got a bad, uh, the world's turning ratty again, see. There are so many, there's so many situations that each one of us get into. And we're from all walks of life, but we got one thing in common. We've got a mind that becomes a power. And it tells you how to act, how to think, how to react, what to say, what to do. You can't live that way. I tried it. You can't do it. You can do it, but you're going to have to suffer the consequences. And that's what it meant there until I accepted my the devastating weakness and all of its consequences of real happiness. I'll find none at all. That's what they're talking about. But these are principles. See, these are step application. These are things that I must do today to be kind to my fellow men. In step seven, I had to learn how to be a giver, a true giver, not a taker, a giver. In step six, it tells me how to be, how to get rid of the taking. When step six it says, I'm entirely ready to have God remove all these defects of character, all of them. It's a lifetime practice. What's he talking about? What they're talking about is that I can live in the day I'm in. And I can have this Lord, this God with me, right here at this altar, right here, at this podium. That he can be here with me, help me, guide me, direct me. Give me the thoughts to use so that I can be the man that he wants me to be instead of the man I want to be. How would I know what to say or do, even for my own life now? Take a look at it and see. Check your own track record out on this. When you get into a situation, and maybe the situation you're in is maybe getting a little bit hot and heavy, maybe it's a big argument, or maybe you've got your mind talking to you too strong, what are you going to do with that? Are you going to keep it going? If you keep it going, you're going to get hurt. You're going to get hurt real bad because you're going to hurt somebody else. And then when you hurt somebody else, you have to pay that price too. It's bad enough to pay a price to anxiety yourself, but then when you have to pay a price to somebody else, that's the reason they have the steps. That's the reason why they have step 10 there. They got eight and nine in front of it so that I can make amends wherever possible, it says. This is something important because the character building is not just coming to meetings, sitting down like this. It's not just a reading thing. Like tonight it was read. It was, it was read real good. Uh, this, this is about a way of life. This is about a change of character. This is about living today, and I mean right now for the now. If I am not doing it now, when would I do it? I had a sponsor that told me this, and it, 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 took, it took a long time to dawn on me what he said. He said, when I wake up in the morning, my own home, wherever that is, he says, if you don't have the program of recovery, you haven't got one. I thought, but that don't make sense, you know, because I've been to so many meetings, I read so much, I know so much and everything else. But what he was talking about is the same thing I'm talking about now. If the disease isn't treated right now, it never gets treated. Would you believe that? Because this, this is a hard thing to swallow. But it's true. Because if the, if, if the disease isn't treated now, when will it get treated? Tomorrow? Would you wake up tomorrow and then all the things are okay because today was a good day? When would it get treated? You know, it would never get treated because the character change never took place. I will remain the same man as I've always been because I go to the power of self. This is what step two is all about. That I can be somebody right now only by the grace of God. And the somebody I'm talking about comes out of step application. That's why I have to, my, I myself had to learn what was wrong with me. I built a mind, I built a life a long time ago, and it didn't necessarily have to be built in bars either. But I was building a life, and the character I was building was me, and that's who I am. And the day I die is when that character will die too. See, I can build a new character though, and I can live under the grace of God right now. This is what I come here for. This is what this meeting is about, by the way, if you don't know it. Is learning about 12 step as an application, as a way of life, so I can live in a world that's God's world.
I don't accept life on life's terms. That's too tough. That's too severe. But I'll accept life on God's terms. This is something I had to learn for me. This is a way of life that I'm telling you, I'm proud, I'm proud, very proud of my mind, the way it functions, the way it thinks. Where it doesn't go in the sewer, it don't go there no more. This is something, you know, that I recognize myself. God gave it to me. You can't take it from me. You used to be able to do that, you know. You used to be able to make me mad. And you'd take away everything from me because I would feel so, so angry and so hostile inside. I wasn't worth nothing to nobody or even myself. But you, but you can't do that today. I can throw it away. I can go to me. And me tells me what to do and I'm in trouble again because the disease is still in me. Because that's who I am. The new character, building the new character is what I've been talking about. This 12-step application today for a life today that God wants me to have. Yes. Thanks for listening. I hope you enjoyed the podcast. Sobercast is ad-free, and we'd like your help in order to keep it that way. So if you'd like to help us be self-supporting by pledging a dollar to a month, visit Sobercast.com and look for the donate links. Thank you very much.